There are nine key factors that explain the economic boom in America in the 1920s. These are weak unions, credit, natural resources, confidence, World War I, technology change, mass production, advertising and Republican policies. You won't need to write about them all in detail, but it is important you understand them thoroughly. Let's take an example, Republican policies. The 1920s were presided over by a succession of Republican administrations. Presidents Harding, Coolidge and Hoover all continued similar policies whereby they avoided interference in business. This was termed laissez-faire, or let it be. The Republican presidents, especially Hoover, who was a self-made millionaire, believed in the idea that if you worked hard, you would become rich. This was called rugged individualism. Additionally, they encouraged business through only charging low taxes, meaning money could be used on expanding enterprise. At the same time, high trade tariffs, a type of tax on goods from other nations coming into the country, protected American business from foreign competition who were forced to charge more for their products and services to avoid making a loss. Did you spot the four key points within Republican policies? Can you remember them? Laissez-faire, rugged individualism, low taxes and high tariffs. Remember, it is not enough just to list them, you still need to explain you understand them. Republican policies are one of the more in-depth factors. Some of the others do not require as much detail, but they all can be explained with examples. Let's try another factor, mass production. Mass production very simply means the production of large amounts of standardised products. This is best explained through the assembly line, where parts were conveyed from one specialist to another who fits them together. This idea was pioneered by Henry Ford, who started the Ford Motor Company and produced the Ford Model T car. Each man and each machine do only one thing. The thing is to keep everything in motion and take the work to the man, not the man to the work. Remember, the examiner will not be able to award you high marks if you simply state the definition of mass production. You will need to go into detail, as we have just done now. There are five key groups of people who in 1920s America did not share in the supposed prosperity of the boom, and any set of questions that focus on the economic boom will most likely also inquire into these as well. Poor farmers, textile workers, black sharecroppers, miners and new immigrants all suffered in the 1920s, and it is important you know and can explain why that is. Of these, perhaps the most significant and contrary to understanding would be the farmers, this is because farming produce, primarily grain but also fruit and livestock, increased massively during this period due mainly to improved machinery such as the combine harvester. However, the extra produce made was itself a problem as supply outreached demand. There was not enough buyers in the USA, plus Canadian grain was dominating the market. With World War I over, European farmers could provide for themselves without needing to buy from America and high tariffs put up in retaliation for American high tariffs made selling abroad unfeasible anyway. All this meant was that the price of farming goods such as grain dropped. And it dropped even further when in an attempt to make more money, farmers began producing even more goods. This meant they did not have enough money to pay the mortgage for their land. It was even worse for labourers who were worked on other people's farms who found themselves being replaced by cheap machinery. However, it is important to note that these problems only affected the small farmers. Large farms at this period of time did well. Similarly, New immigrants, and especially black people, faced discrimination and racism, which further prevented them getting good jobs, both in the countryside and the city. There is more to research about these groups, and you will need to do that by yourself. Miners and textile workers, people who in essence worked in old industries, found themselves being replaced by machines that could do the work more efficiently and for less cost to the owner. Remember the poorly chosen words of President Herbert Hoover in 1929. In America today, we are nearer a final triumph over poverty than is any other land. This phrase obviously came back to haunt him after the Wall Street crash and ensuing Great Depression. 
However, the whole point of this section is to acknowledge that the economic boom of the 1920s was only making the rich richer, but that many people, an estimated 42% of the American population in 1928, were living below the poverty line. What were some of the features of the Roaring Twenties? In 1920s America, society saw a massive change in the attitude and value of many in the population. For the first time in history, the prosperity and technological advancements of the age had filtered down to a large proportion of the population. Many people had leisure time, money to spend, and gadgets and other opportunities to spend them on. These included the car, radio, labour-saving domestic appliances such as the vacuum cleaner, cinema, as well as opportunities to go out to clubs and dance to jazz. Attitude towards sex became more liberal with recognised sex symbols such as Clara Bow and Rudolf Valentino. Women in this period began gaining more freedoms. In 1920, they had been given the vote. During the war, women had proved they were capable of working in factories like men. Domestic appliances shortened the amount of time needed on housework. Women began to be targeted in advertising campaigns that recognised the influence and potential of this demographic. New, inexpensive clothes and makeup helped define the flapper. Young, liberated, urban women who smoked in public tended to have short, bobbed haircuts and wore short skirts. Now please note, they were not prostitutes. Do not make that simple, glaring mistake in your exams by referring to them as such. However, for all this liberal freedom and changing attitudes, America remained a conservative, traditional, God-fearing country. Flappers were the exception, not the norm. Most women, especially away from major metropolises like Chicago, remember the musical, and New York, were tied to the home and child-rearing, especially women from working-class backgrounds. Public backlash to the corrupting influence of jazz and the cinema were very evident. It is more true to say that the 1920s saw the beginning of change in attitude than a predominance more evident in the 1960s and 70s. 